So in this video, we're going to work a little bit with multi-lines. Um, I have on the screen a square, and the square is 100 feet by 100 feet. And what I'm going to do first is to put a grid inside that square. And I'll use the hatch command. I've typed in BH, um, and I can see on the ribbon I have the hatch settings. This hatch pattern is a little different from ones we've used in the past. It's actually going to be a user-defined hatch pattern. So you have a number of different pattern types. Select user defined and set the spacing for the user defined hatch to five feet. Okay, one other setting would be to make sure that double is uh, selected. All right, so then when you come down here, you can insert the hatch pattern within the square. Now we're going to need to explode this so that we can snap to the intersections of the grid. So I'm going to select the hatch pattern and input X for explode. All right, so now it'll be a series of lines that I can um, snap to. Now the next step to generate this labyrinth would be to define the path. Um, so I've created a layer that I've called path. And you know, your path can begin and end anywhere along the perimeter of the square. Um, it doesn't, it's just a sort of rough guide at this point. It will be used to generate the walls. Um, and one thing I want to do is I don't want it to snap to these intersections. So I'm going to turn off object snap. And it's gray, so I know it's off. And then using the polyline tool, I'm just going to sort of sketch uh, a rough idea of where my, my path that takes me from the beginning to the end of my labyrinth will go. Okay, so along this path, one will be able to get through the entire labyrinth. And the other thing to do would be to generate a series of dead ends. Um, so those dead ends will connect along the path, but they won't lead you to the, the end of the little maze. So I'll go through and generate a series of, of dead ends. Um, what I'll do also is I'll brighten that color a little bit so it's a little easier to see on the screen. Okay, so there's one dead end. So now I've, I've finished constructing all the dead ends, and what you'll notice is that there is um, either a path or a dead end in every single um, grid square, and the dead ends end at some point inside the, the labyrinth, and the only one that goes all the way through is this path. Now what I'm going to begin to do is generate some multi-lines. Um, I've already established a multi-line style, and I'll show you some of the settings. Um, I capped the ends. I made an adjustment to the fill color to make it a little bit darker, um, and I assigned these offsets. You click on the, the, the item you'd like to offset, and you change it here. Um, and if you click on it and set current, you can make that the current multi-line style. All right, to generate a multi-line, I'll do one off to the side here. You type in ML, and you click on two points. Okay, it will automatically um, adjust to the settings that you've established for it. And then I will make another multi-line that's perpendicular to this one. Okay, now the way that the multi-lines work is you can fuse them. Right now, these are separate multi-lines. If I double click on one, I can generate um, various conditions, as you can see on the screen, uh, an open T, for example, and then I can select the two items. Um, the order of your selection will matter, so you need to be a little bit mindful of that. Let's try that again. Open T, one, two. All right, and what you can see is that it has eliminated the line that's in between it. Now, one thing, um, and this you'll run into this when you generate your your labyrinth. There are certain conditions that don't um, merge well. 
if I was to construct a multi-line uh, going from one corner, and let's turn on ortho here, like so, you'll have a hard time generating a condition like this. It's preferable to run it the straight runs as long as possible and then generate a T. Um, you will find also that a corner condition is, is a common one that you may encounter. So you can continuously make the, the multi-line or you can generate a, um, I'll turn the object snaps back on, a multi-line that snaps from two points like that, double click, and generate a corner joint by selecting the two. You can see it's it's lost that line. So then I'll erase these and begin to input these into my, my labyrinth. So I would suggest what you do is generate the perimeter first, go all the way around. So you have the path entry point and exit, and then begin working on the interior wall. So here I could keep going until I have a point where I need to stop. Okay. Other things to keep in mind, um, you can see in a condition like right here that half the wall is is um, on one side of the grid and half is on the other. When we snap to our start points, we um, are snapping to these intersections. So in order to generate certain kinds of alignment, you want to click on a multi-line, click on its grip, and drag it half the width of the wall beyond the grid line, or rather it should be 12. Oops, one more time. So it'll be half of its its wall thickness beyond the grid. And that way, if I was to generate a multi-line from this point, say, to this point, oops, multi-line from here to here, I'll have an alignment condition right here. And I'll continue making a few more multi-lines. ML snap to intersection, and you may want to turn off some of your object snaps. Um, intersection is certainly one you're going to need. And then if I wanted to make a corner condition here, corner joint, click, click, there we go. Click on this grip, on this multi-line wall, click on the grip and drag it 12 units over. All right, and you can continue on until you've filled up the entire labyrinth.